friends welcome to another video so today in this video i'm going to talk about the most requested topic so suppose if you are someone who would like to do a phd in a reputed institution so you would like to go to iic bangalore also suppose if you are someone who are looking for a phd in iic bangalore i'm going to talk about how you can get a phd at iic bangalore top 5 10 checklist so let's talk about the complete topic in detail this is Caroline Green from Biotechnica, so let's get started to the video. If you're wondering to join PhD in IAC Bangalore, you might be thinking like, how can I join IAC Bangalore? What are the requirements that I need to have? What are the documents that I need to have? So I'll be talking all the top 10 checklists for all of you. So the first thing is, let's talk about how you can actually enter into IAC by uh, joining PhD program. There are three ways where you can actually uh, join PhD. The first is going to be your integrated PhD program. They are going to provide you integrated PhD program suppose if you are in your bachelor's but looking for masters and phd together in iac bangalore so that is going to be one of the option the second option is going to be after your masters you might be in your msc in biotechnology microbiology or biochemistry or anything after that you can also join phd but i'll be talking about the eligibility criteria certain conditions and the next one is External Registration Program, ERP, PhD. This is for people who are working in company after two years of experience. They can also join a PhD program in IC Bangalore. Suppose if they are an integrated PhD program, they can join Biological Sciences, uh, PhD after Masters. There are different departments or areas of research, I can say. So you can join biochemistry, ecological sciences, microbiology, molecular reproduction, development and genetics, neurosciences. And this is actually related with data sciences also, brain and artificial intelligence. If you're interested in uh, biological as well as uh, bioinformatics students, of course, uh, you can literally look for this one. So whenever you start applying for the examination or for the uh, interview protocols, uh, usually you will be uh, asked to attend interview in three departments so they are going to give you a choices i'll be talking about it but usually people used to go for biochemistry mcb or reproduct molecular reproduction or development and genetics whichever um, department or areas you you are interested you can literally go and attend the interviews so this is phd after your master's after your master's you can actually per pursue your phd these are the department where you can choose and attend your interviews the same goes for the external registration programs but i'll be talking about the eligibility who can actually apply for this one so let's talk about the rest of the topic in detail the second one is going to be what is the eligibility so i'm going to talk about for integrated phd what's the eligibility if you want to join after your bachelor's what eligibility you need to have if you want to enter into an integrated PhD program or after your master's if you want to do PhD what should be the eligibility or if you're working in a company for two years in any of the pharma company or anything how you can also join PhD in IAC I'm going to talk about so we'll talk about all the eligibility criteria so suppose if you're someone who are watching out the video uh, doing bachelor's but wanted to do master's and PhD in IAC then this is for you so you need to be first class in bachelor's it might be BTEC in any of the things or BSc in any of the things but you need to be first class in your degree so if you're belonging to biotechnology pharmacy science or veterinary sciences or agriculture sciences then definitely in out of all these things you need to be a first class grade you need to have and then you can start applying for this one this is about the qualification I'm talking about I'll be talking about the exams also later so integrated people you need to have a first class uh, in any of these fields and suppose if you are PhD after masters if you want to go for PhD after your masters in any of these things uh, I'll be talking about suppose if you are uh, belonging to agriculture or pharmacy or veterinary sciences, MSc or MTech in engineering, but you want to go for it, you can literally go for um, valid gate you need to have net jrf or gpat any examination if you have cleared then only you can actually go for the interview suppose if you are in your mbbs or md then you also 
need to have your gate score or net jrf but this is desirable not mandatory if you have you can go for or else you can directly go for the interview b farm students definitely need to have a valid gpat score or jrf and if you're belonging to msc in life sciences like microbiology biochemistry molecular biology uh, any of the things then definitely you need to have any of the uh, national level examinations so like csir net or ugc net or you need to have dbt or icmr or you need you should have at least dst inspire provisional offer which is valid so all these people can actually go and attend the interview but this will not happen if you're not going to have any of the national examination you definitely need to have any of the national level examination after your masters and the next one is going to be external registration who can join this one as i already told you people who are working in biopharma companies or biotechnology companies and r and d departments they can actually enter into this program or people who are a faculty member from a government aided colleges or in government organization in engineering or agriculture or pharmaceutical or veterinary or medical colleges or medical university mbbs md uh, professors can also enter into there but they should be from the government so they also can enter into a phd but usually for external registration the organization where they are working has to fund them so it's not going to be like if you're going to have a csir net or icmr or dbt you used to get the fundings from the respective departments like dbt is going to provide you csir is going to provide you this is going to be if you're working in a biopharma company they are ready to fund you then you can join iisc bangalore the same way faculty members of the organization is going to fund you you can join them also so this is about the eligibility or the graduation that you need to have the next comes the most important thing is what are the exams i'm going to talk about suppose if you want to join integrated ms phd program after your bachelor's then definitely you need to have written iit jam examination in biotechnology if you want to join um, ms phd in biotechnology then you need to have a uh, clear jam biotechnology examination even gate people can also enter into this this is integrated very specifically jam biotechnology is very important suppose if you are phd after masters as i already mentioned you need to have a dst inspire provisional offer so provisional offer usually be valid for only one year so if you have that provisional offer you can attend interviews even though you don't have any kind of national level examination because it's going to award you a jrf position or if you have a csir net jrf not ls ugc net jrf dbt or icmr jrf or just examination or nb hm research if you're going to have then you can start applying for phd programs where the official notification usually comes you have to just um, uh, upload or write every information you have to courier them uh, to the iic bangalore actually the next one as i already told you this is usually for two years full time employment they should be availing in the company and I, as i already told you only the company or the institution is going to be the sponsor for them and this is another criteria for them they should at least have any of these things like csir ugc or UG, uh, dbt or icmr they should have cleared at least any of these examinations so this is also like the regular basis how they used to recruit for phd after master so we've been talking about the eligibility the exams for each of them the next comes selection process how they are going to select this is most important thing as i already told you ms phd students will write iit jam examination if you have a very good score in your iit jam examination then you will be called for the interview so first let's talk about the integrated phd so first shortlisted based on the jam scores or the rank of your jam examination you will be called for the interview and in the interview you will be asked some sort of questions with some 10 to 12 uh, professors in a boardroom and you will be asked questions and if you're going to be clearing then you can enter into as a integrated into a P integrated phd program and this is mainly not based on only on your jam score only if you're going to be a topper in a jam score but if you didn't perform well in your interview then it's not going to be possible they're going to check based on your jam score also as well as based on your performance in the interview also so both goes hand in hand together if you want to join integrated phd program 
The next comes PhD after masters. As I already mentioned, uh, you will be entering only if you have any sort of national level examination or DST inspire provisional offer. And you will be going in for interview. So based on the performance of both the things, uh, there will be a chart listed and you can uh, attend interviews and after performance, you will get to know which department you can go for. I'll be talking about what are the departments you will be given where you can attend the interview also. The next one, external registration is also based on the national level exam and the performance in the interview which means examination along with the interviews goes hand in hand each other so these are the four things that we've been talking about to get a phd positions in the ic bangalore the next one is going to be if you're going to have any sort of previous research experience or research statement you used to highlight it uh, when you're going to submit your uh, application format, it's usually going to be you'll be sending it to the IAC Bangalore. Uh, and then you will be taking a printout copy also when you're going to go in for the interview process. So if you're going to have any sort of previous experience like internships or project training in any of the national laboratories or collaborations with abroad, then you can always put those things in the application form or you can also mention them in the resume. This can add up to the point that you have some sort of research experience. The next comes always be prepared to talk about your research instead. Uh, very specifically, if I have to talk about MSc, suppose if you have done uh, masters in any sort of MSc and if you want to join PhD, uh, so when you're going to apply, you need to uh, attend any interviews uh, in three departments like you can choose biochemistry or MCB or you can go for neurosciences, any three departments you can choose if you have a national level examination then you will be eligible to apply for it and you can choose any three departments and in any three departments you can go and attend the interview so it will be one day you will have all the interviews happening so three departments you can go and attend so if you got selected in any of the department then you can join them or else biochemistry usually a biochemistry department usually conducts two rounds of interview so even if you clear first round you have to clear second round because the competition is maximum then they will always go for two rounds of interviews so be prepared to talk about your research interest suppose if they are going to give you some hypothetical question to you about the area of research when you're going to go and analyze about the re uh, interview process so how it's going to be is first they'll ask you in which field you want to be questioned. So if you're going to be very strong enough in protein chemistry, then you say that you're very comfortable with protein chemistry and they're going to ask you from the very basic question. And it will be based on your examination that you have written and they're going to be very, very friendly enough to support you and to guide you when you're not able to understand. Literally, they'll be helping out also. The next one, you always need to take up your updated resume. Usually when you're going to submit your application process, nobody is going to check. Only if you have any entrance examination, if you have cleared or any sort of national level examination, you can directly go for the interview. So only in the panel, interview panel, they're going to check your resume. So always have an updated resume which talks about your previous researchers or if you have been awarded some sort of scholarship before, so always highlight it on that. The next one is going to be the most important thing is your performance in the interview because people who are coming and attending the interview of have all cleared any sort of examination, which means all are going to be uh, very good enough in the subject. But what makes you stand out of so many people is how you're going to approach the questions. So be sure enough when you're going to go in for biochemistry or microbiology or whatever it is, if they're going to ask some sort of questions, you will be usually asked to write it in the whiteboard and they'll ask you to explain some sort of questions. Let me take, suppose if they're going to ask you a question, how will you isolate a specific RNA from a group of RNA? Or they can ask you questions like, how can you find out an intermediate molecule if you do not know the initial product, complementary test? Or they might be asking if you are an integrated PhD, uh, if you want to enter, they might be asking you a question based on the RBCs, like wh why anaerobic situation takes place, uh, which animals do not have a, a concave RBC. So these sort of questions you might be getting in your integrated PhD. Suppose after master's, if you're going to go in for each of the department will ask a specific questions like amino acid structures, or they can ask you a question based on your uh, Ramachandran plot. 
or questions based on whichever you are more comfortable and always try to answer it if you know if not then they would be giving you some hint so that you can answer accordingly so whatever it is uh, you just try it out in the board if they're going to ask you some sort of question so performance in the interview really matters a lot and you are going to learn many things in the interview also the next important thing is be strong in your basics because IAC is a very reputed institution, but they are not going to ask you complicated questions. They're going to ask you very basic questions, not like the examination that you have written also. It's going to be very basics, like they can ask you how you're going to isolate a DNA sample and what's the difference between um, DNA and RNA, very specifically about uh, the absorptions. And they'll be asking about the Bradford reagent, how you can do experiments, some sort of questions which are related to research. If you know what you can answer it or else they'll help you out. So always be strong enough in your basics. Uh, whether you're taking a very small part of it, always be very strong enough in your basic, which is definitely going to help you, whether it is biochemistry or molecular biology or cell biology, whatever it is. And don't be discouraged of seeing people who have already got good ranks in the examination because many would be coming up with uh, very good ranks also. But if you're going to perform really well in the interview then definitely you're going to be selected also and the next important thing is always when you go for the interview the most important thing i'm going to tell you is of course we don't know whether you are going to be selected or not but you should always have a thought process or analysis the research work that's been going on in the specific laboratory you'll be choosing three departments so look for the scientists whom you are really interested sometimes that can become a question also like whom do you want to work under with so you need to know at least what research work is going on in the specific department and as i already told you for integrated phd there would be some 10 people in the boardroom but for phd interview it will be like three to four people who will be asking you a question you'll be writing in the board and explain so if they're going to ask about their research you need to be at least manageable to answer some sort of question to them and as I already told you always be ready to choose three departments and about the scientists and the research work that's been going on so the interview is not as uh, tough if you're going to know your basics and definitely they're going to help you out but it's going to be kind of competitive because uh, in the interview you'll get to understand that even though many people who have written the examination is going to come but what makes very different from there is how you're going to approach in that moment how you're going to answer the question in the moment if you're not going to answer it please do say that you do not know the answer and you will learn it from them also so it's going to be a wonderful experience so these are some of the ways that you can enter a phd and get a phd positions in iz bangalore either through a integrated phd program or phd after your masters or through external registration program also so this is all about uh, the PhD in IC Bangalore. So you need to have all this top 10 checklist uh, kept in your mind. If you're going to clear it, definitely you will be entering it to there. So I believe that this video is helpful for all of you. So suppose if you have any sort of questions and you want to ask uh, to us, you can always uh, put your questions in the comment section. So if you really like this video, please like, share and subscribe to our channel Biotechnica. Thank you all of you.